Meghan Markle and Harry are spending happy days in their California mansion acquired after the Mexit. This house was built on land that once belonged to the Chumash tribe, an Amerindian people very attached to traditions. The region is also home to several hot and cold springs, as well as a series of underground rivers, from where the inhabitants divert the water. But its use is sacred, as tribe leader Eleanor Fishburne says that Harry and Meghan should not be using it to irrigate their gardens. Eleanor has invited the couple, who have son Archie, two, and three-week-old daughter Lilibet, to meet them and discuss alternative options. Human remains, thought to be from a member of the tribe, were discovered near Harry and Meghan's home earlier this month. The exact address where they were found hasn't been made public, but the area is believed to be less than 400 yards from the Montecito mansion where the family live. Prince Harry is currently residing in the UK ahead of Princess Diana's statue unveiling on Thursday 1 July but he confused everyone when he released a pre-recorded video which was in fact shot at his home in the US. The Duke stood inside the living room of his home to give a speech to the camera, revealing a new angle of his lounge. In shot was a large brown wooden door with a matching wooden batten above it. Through the glass a large plant can be seen, bringing a touch of color to their muted interiors. The cream room also had a large bunch of peonies in it and the edge of their triptych of artworks could be observed. Under the art is an antique-looking sideboard which is usually dressed with candles, flowers and stacks of books. Piling up books for display is an interiors trick we've seen Meghan use in her former homes before she met the prince. Other images of this same room have revealed other rustic additions such as a wooden ladder propped up against the wall and authentic double doors. Prince Harry and Meghan appear to have a second living room with a stunning stone fireplace, a black fireguard, fig tree and more monochrome artwork, this time an image of a bear. The royal couple purchased their Santa Barbara property for an estimated £11.2 million in July 2020 and they are also still renting Frogmore Cottage in the UK, where Prince Harry's cousin Princess Eugenie is currently residing. While William's wife Kate Middleton reportedly tried to act as peacemaker between the brothers at the funeral, royal biographer Hugo Vickers thinks it is unlikely there will be a reconciliation this time around because, Harry has to return to his wife in Los Angeles. Mr Vickers says the warring princes don't stand a chance of reuniting because the Duchess of Sussex would, bite Harry's head off. Mr. Vickers believes there will be no emotional reunion for the brothers at the unveiling of their mum Princess Diana's statue at Kensington Palace to mark what would have been her 60th birthday on Thursday. Harry and William have hardly talked and have only had a few text exchanges since the bitter fallout. There have not been any personal chats or proper talks, just a very brief and minimal exchange of text messages, a source said. The relationship is still very much strained and there's no sign yet that there will be any sort of coming together anytime soon. Royal author and commentator Richard Fitzwilliams agreed that a cooling of the tension between the princes, doesn't look hopeful. Rift between Prince Harry and Prince William will not heal quickly, even if they come together to unveil a memorial to their beloved mother. He said the situation has not been helped by recent interviews Harry has conducted which have been critical of the royal family including the explosive tell-all chat with Oprah Winfrey. In more news, Jessica Mulroney may be using her Instagram story to send Meghan Markle a message. The stylist, 41, posted a quote on Sunday that fans speculated could have been directed towards her former best friend Markle, 39, a year after their falling out. Life changes. You lose love. You lose friends. You lose pieces of yourself that you never imagined would be gone the now-expired post read, according to various outlets. Meghan reportedly met celebrity stylist Jessica Mulroney, whose father-in-law is former Canadian Prime Minister Brian Mulroney, while she was living in Toronto filming suits. In 2020 it was claimed their friendship had become strained, things only worsening when the Canadian stylist was accused of racism by influencer Sasha Exeter in June. After the incident, Jessica lost her job on ABC's Good Morning America along with a number of fashion deals. Some reports even suggested the Duchess, who is biracial and regularly speaks out on issues of racism, had cut ties with Mulroney. A source close to Meghan said she was left, mortified, by Jessica's actions and feels she can no longer be associated with her.
While it is unclear whether the women have since patched up their relationship, Meghan appeared to have sent Mulroney flowers for her birthday in March. The former I Do, Redo host later publicly defended the former senior royal from palace staffers' bullying allegations. I don't know that anyone has ever had to deal with the pressure, the politics and the press like this woman, Mulroney wrote alongside a photo of the pair out to dinner. In the face of it all, I have never seen her waver from kindness, empathy and love. Mulroney regularly shares cryptic messages on her Instagram story and previously made headlines for urging her followers to speak out. After the premiere of Prince Harry's Apple TV Plus series with Oprah Winfrey, The Me You Can't See. Speak out for what you believe in when you are ready, she wrote in May. No matter how loud the other voices are, yours is the only one that should matter. Despite rumors that Meghan and Jessica's friendship was then, not what it once was, Jessica said that she is, constantly, in touch with Meghan, saying the royal often, checks up, on her. However, a source claimed that they aren't as close as they once were. Meghan Markle's uncle has told how her own mother, Doria Ragland, gave her a sweet nickname when she was a child and she still calls her it to this day. Her relative, Joseph Johnson, has previously shared details from Meghan's childhood and a look at rare photos of her growing up. Speaking to Mail Online, Mr. Johnson from Fresno, California, said Doria had always called her daughter, Flower. And Meghan's family aren't the only ones with lots of nicknames, the royals also have lots of weird and wonderful monikers for each other. The Queen for instance has had several nicknames of her own, including Lilibet, the name of Meghan and Harry's newborn daughter. In the past Prince Philip would call his wife Lilibet and also refer to her as, Cabbage, or, Sausage. Another strange nickname for the Queen is, Gary, which reportedly comes from when Prince William was a child and could not pronounce Granny properly. Prince William and Kate Middleton also share sweet nicknames, with the Duchess of Cambridge referring to her husband as, Baldy. In return, William reportedly refers to his wife as, Dodd, which is short for the Duchess of Doolittle, or, Poppet. In more royal family news, the Queen's youngest son was joined by his wife, the Countess of Wessex, for the engagement at the club on Monday 28 June. The royal pair were visiting the club to mark its 150-year anniversary. There, Sophie practiced her swing on the golf course, and the couple were photographed with a tree that they planted during a previous visit in 2019 now a healthy young sapling. The Cunninghall Club told local news site that it was, delighted, to receive the royal couple. The Cunninghall Club told local news site that it was, delighted, to receive the royal couple. Edward looked dashing in a tartan kilt, it's made from Earl of Forfar Tartan, which was redesigned and named in the prince's honor by the Strathmore Woolen Company in 2019. His wife Sophie looked typically chic in one of her favorite looks, a floral dress, which she teamed with high heels, a smart blazer and carried a blue clutch bag. Royal ladies love to wear pretty petal patterns, particularly in the summer. There's nothing like a few blooms to raise our mood. It's not just Sophie, the Duchess of Cambridge often steps out in fancy florals and the likes of Queen Letizia and Princess Beatrice and Eugenie are also huge fans of the natural print. Even the Queen has been known to don a floral pattern on occasions. Edward and Sophie aren't the only royal family members visiting Scotland at the moment. The Queen has joined forces with her daughter, Princess Anne, and grandson, the Duke of Cambridge, for what's been dubbed, Royal Week, constituting a roster of special engagements for the family north of the border. Thank you for watching. If you liked, feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to get new video updates. We will update the latest videos about the royal family every day. Thanks and goodbye.